lot of energy today. Both these teams have endured a brutal travel week. They've had delay upon delay. But we're here on a frozen rocky top, ready to go. And it is Passat, ironically, the only player to ever transfer from Tennessee to Vanderbilt who touched it first in this game. Vanderbilt obviously in the gray uniforms, the Lady Vols in their home whites. Tennessee packing it in on this opening possession. Moore dishes it inside. This is Oliver. And Oliver scoops it back out to Passat, but check the shot clock. And the first bucket of the game with a big smile on her face is Justine Passat. Passat actually got a few boos in the introduction, so I think that's why the smile was on her face. The Lady Vols starting five, all averaging double figures this year. And Stripling throwing it out of Powell's reach for the first turnover of the game. Well, it's going to be a good matchup tonight. I like both of these teams, especially when you look at the guard situation. When you look at their post situation on both sides, two different post games. I think it's good, too, Tamika, but they're both playing well. I think both these teams are very happy with where they are at this point in the season. Well, one of the things when you watch Vanderbilt play, they have the personality of their coach, Shea Ralph. She wants to punch first. Lady Vols have struggled early on in the game, especially starting games, so see what they can do. The three answered by Jewel Spear. And so both buckets made so far have been three-pointers for each team. Well, it's interesting. I just looked at the back of the uniforms, and every single Lady Ball player right now is wearing Summit on the back of their jerseys. And instead of their uh, names, they have Summit back there. Again, uh, this is the Wee Backpack game on this Sunday for Tennessee. As we draw attention to the Pat Summit Foundation, a foul was on Powell, by the way. Ayanna Moore, a great job of attacking the basket, and that's one thing that you'll look at. She likes to get herself going downhill to the basket, get herself going, get some easy buckets, get to the free throw line, then you'll start to see her pull it out. But she had a game, career high, 37 points a couple games ago. Do you believe in the announcer's jinx? I do. Okay. She's made <laughs> 25 straight free throws. Oh, my oh! goodness. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> great pass. And it is Striplin, the beneficiary of that great pass. And uh, Tennessee takes the one-point lead. I cannot believe she yeah. missed that free throw. Told you. I do believe in the jink, but let's make a note. All five starting five for Tennessee average in double digits, so trying to find different ways to score. Passat not able to connect. Passat hit her first shot. She's missed her last two. Jackson leading the break. Look at Rakia with the ball handling skills. Coast to coast for Rakia Jackson. And that is so hard to guard. Player gets it off the back and able to drive up the floor. You got to find her. You got to figure out a way to stop her early on. She gets that low. It's going to be hard to stop. Vanderbilt in history has only won one time in this arena, and that was in 2019. Jordan Cambridge was actually part of that team who's in the game today for Vanderbilt. But the Lady Vols have a 77 and 10 record against Vanderbilt. Puckett, turn around off the glass, missed it. And Cambridge with the ball. Jordan Cambridge, number three, a player to watch as well. Leading the team in scoring, but finding ways, figure it out, and Yana Moore able to get that to connect. Yet the other player, I say, they're the one-two punch for the Vanderbilt offense. Yeah, Moore has been lighting it up in SEC play, averaging 21 points a game. Jackson got loose, and Rakia Jackson, to make has come out very aggressive. Well, she's taking shots within the flow of the offense, and I think that's what's most important. When you start forcing shots, especially against Vanderbilt, they are good up and down. They want to run. They want to get those steals. So you got to make sure the shot selection that you take is a good one. Keep in mind, Tamari Key played 28 minutes against Mississippi State. She'll be in the game a little bit later for the Lady Vols, and we'll give them a much different look. Powell up against Passat and one. Jasmine Powell taking it to the basket, taking it hard. Passat thought she got that in the air, but definitely with the body. And you'll see Powell does a great job leaning into Passat a little bit, but trying to get her to get that foul. 
Jasmine Powell had a very good game against Mississippi State on Thursday. Lady Vols again came from behind 13 down in the second quarter to win that game. And Powell will be on the free throw line now. 75% free throw shooter this year. Knocks that down. And Kyle Wynn into the game. Speaking of good games against Mississippi State, career high 13 points, five rebounds, three steals, and an assist in just 23 minutes. Well, when Kyle Wynn comes in, you'll see the energy level for the Lady Vols go up yet another notch. Not that Jasmine Powell doesn't bring the energy, but this young lady, we have watched her. She's always the first one in the gym. She's always getting extra shots and always trying to find ways to help this team win. Travel on Pierre. Tennessee shooting well here early in the game. Five of six. Yeah, win. Good feature on her on the Tennessee uh, website right now. She's future doctor win, by the way. Aspires <laughs> to go to medical school when she finishes playing basketball. A fantastic student. Tennessee's only missed one shot. Stripling, ambitious pass that's picked off by Moore. Well, it's hard to make a skip pass across oh. the bottom, and that's going to be a turnover. Yeah, unforced error on Moore will give it right back to Lady Vols. Win actually is uh, from the Nashville area, but this is her dream school. This is where she always wanted to play in college, grew up a Lady Ball fan. And Tamari Key into the game again. Uh, Tamari getting extended minutes on Thursday. How does it change having her in to me? Well, Tamari Key's six six, so you already see the height difference out there and just being able to be there. Another unforced error. So both teams, I think, you can tell right now both teams playing with so much intensity, wanting to make the right plays, wanting to get some quick some quick plays, but in the mix of that, a couple of unforced errors. Vanderbilt needs a basket. They've turned it over their last two possessions. Moore trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Wynn and knocks down the jumper. That is such a sweet shot. Yeah, you heard the net on that one. Stream music. He offensive foul that was the reason you saw Sasha Washington hit the deck well hopefully we'll get another replay of that but you know, one of the things for Tamari Key when she's posting up because she's already big you look at that right it may be not as bad but every single team is they're waiting on that more they Vanderbilt their last bucket Cambridge got loose for a three. And Jackson. Jackson will bring it up herself. We saw her do that earlier in the quarter. Rukia short on the jumper, and now it's Vanderbilt on the break. Well, this is the game Bandy wants to see. They want to go up and down and great finish. Sasha Washington, Cambridge. Like Kelly Harper saying that Washington's a player that they, they haven't defended well in the past. She's a smaller post player, a little bit different look in there. She's guarding Jackson right now. I think Tamari Key got to get low. Right now, Ayanna Moore playing around the top and go down a little bit. Win lost it, got it back. A lot of contact, no whistle. And Moore picks it up. Vanderbilt can tie or take the lead. Tennessee was up 12-6. And Puckett with the foul. So Vanderbilt. They're waiting for the transfer portal. So once the season's over, they start looking at the portal. And all of a sudden, you already elevate your team by bringing one of those transfers in. Moore at the free throw line. A reminder that we had a foul on Puckett just before the timeout. And the Moore... He's been averaging 21 points a game in SEC play. Working on another free throw streak. Ayanna Moore, she can score in so many different ways. I like how she's already started this game, being very aggressive to the basket, not settling. She got, the, got a nice jump shot in the paint, got to the free throw line, really switching up the way that she can score. Joel missing the three. Vanderbilt right now on a 6-0 run. Tennessee led 12-6. They made five of their first six shots, and now it's Vanderbilt responding. It's been Tennessee that's been coming from behind this season. All four of their SEC wins have come from double digits down. Spear looking for someone to get rid of it to Darby. 
Well, they got to get the ball down low in the paint. And you see Key fighting down low. Rakia Jackson so good at taking it, taking the body, taking the hit. Uh, Tamari Key really cleared out a, a path for Jackson there. That won't show up in the stat sheet. Well, her presence on the floor at 6'6", she already makes a difference. And Kaya Wynn guarding Ayanna Moore, Jordan Cambridge. Slipped in there, Washington with the offensive rebound miss, and there's the benefit of being 6'6". He didn't even have to jump for that rebound. He open, they get it to her. And I have to think that is going to be there. And that's it. And Kelly's doing something right. She's one of the only two head coaches ever to guide four different programs to the NCAA tournament. Did it at Western Carolina, NC State, Missouri State, and Tennessee now. Pierre, nice. She had Key coming up on her. That was a good shot by the freshman, Camille Pierre from Arizona. And with so much poise, I think that's the thing that you've seen in the SEC conference play. Is in the beginning of the season, of course, she's learning the system, and that was the thing that Coach Ralph talked about, learning the system. She really had to be on her. Rakia Jackson with the finish. But I think Pierre has really come into her own. She's playing with a lot more confidence. Back-to-back -back freshman of the week honors, and you can see her confidence going up. Rakia Jackson already with eight points and five rebounds. She's playing inspired. A little uh, contact out on the perimeter. Foul's going to be called on Kai Wynn. Excuse me, on Spear. Take another look at this pass right here, but Camille Pierre stepped right into the shot. Even with Key coming at her, she's still able to take it in. And, of course, right here, Kai Wynn goes in. Jackson on the board, so really getting moved around on the offensive end to allow her some opportunities to get the rebound. Holly shed 53 for Tennessee's just coming to the game, replacing Spear. Three-pointer off the mark. A good hustle by Washington. That's why she's so dangerous. Incredible speed for a post player. Three is open. Cambridge knocks it down. And Vanderbilt right back within one. Cambridge right now leading the team and scoring 14 points per game. And that's her first bucket of the game, one for four right now. But she's going keep, she has to keep shooting. Cambridge, uh, such an inspiring story. There's Key again from point blank range. And Tamari Key starting to get going here now. That's her second bucket. Uh, three touches in the paint, four points, one rebound to go with that. Pierre, she'll take it. You're going to have to get it and guard that. She'll make more than she'll miss from there. Cambridge again, feeling it. Look at. And a foul on the rebound on Pierre. Yeah, look at both players. Between Pierre and Washington, so active around the basket. But look at this play. Put the ball in the air. When Tamari Key is down low, Ayanna Moore guarding her. I, I mean, that's almost a foot difference. Yeah. You've got to get the ball to her. Tamari Key, 6'6". Six, six, and Moore is listed at 5'8". So, yeah. Darby double-teamed. To Hollingshed. Darby open for three and off the mark. One of the frustrating things playing Vanderbilt is just how quickly they will switch defenses. That happened there. Well, and that's what you just saw. Vanderbilt so good at being able to make these different changes and they just speed you up enough. Tess Darby, though, was wide open, yeah. not able to connect. Final seconds of the opening quarter in this rivalry game that'll keep one of these two teams in second place in the SEC. Tennessee in the midst of playing three teams with top 60 net ratings. They beat Mississippi State Thursday. Shot clock is at four, game clock about two seconds beyond that. And it'll be Tennessee now with the final shot with 5.2 left. Fourth turnover of the quarter by the Commodores. Well, Kaya Wynn got that. She able to get her hand on the ball. Camille Pierre tripped a little bit. And made that turnover. Kelly Harper making a shooting substitution, bringing in Puckett for key. Sarah Puckett hitting 50% from three-point land in SEC play. Kyle Wynn as the clock expires. Launches, got a good look. 
But it is everything we thought a battle. I think because Pat really wanted that. She needed it, and she wanted it. So um, those are the things that they're doing really exceptionally well. I think the thing that makes it unique for me is the fact that so much focus is spent on the caregiver in Alzheimer's, not just the patients with Alzheimer's. Oh, absolutely. And it's so important. It just, um, we, we, we're trying to find a cure, but in the meantime, we've got to have those people that, that help along their journey. Well, it's interesting too, Holly, you were here when it first started. So the beginning stages, obviously, with, with Coach Summer, but even the foundation. Yeah. What has that process been like? Well, you know, it, it, uh, I look back and I just remember her saying, you know, she didn't want to give up coaching, but she had to, but she needed to find something else to rally around. Because, you know, she's not staying still. Nope. She's got to keep moving, and she thought that's a great way for her to, uh, to stay involved and make a difference. And how fun is it to... To everybody wearing purple, to uh, you know, I came in and I said, "Oh, they got something on the back of their shirts." Yeah. that's really cool. I want one of those shirts. As Tess Darby just hit the three for Tennessee, coming out here in the second quarter. At, you know, you and I were calling the game Tennessee had against Mississippi State on Thursday. Looked like they uh, got things going the right direction that night. Tamari yeah. getting in the action. Yeah, they snapped out of it. And needed Tamari and. Uh, uh, they started cranking up their defense, and um, they're going to have to hear this. I'm really impressed with this Vanderbilt team that uh, Shea Rout, she's Shea's done a great job, and uh, they play hard. So this game is uh, the way it should be when Tennessee plays Vanderbilt. Well, I think, too, when you look at Coach Ralph, what she has players that have brought into her system. So the players come out, you know, they know what to expect. They know what they're doing every single day. But look at look at the demeanor of both coaches on the sideline right now. You know they they want it so bad for your players. Well, and you you you, you think about Vanderbilt in the last couple of years, and no disrespect to the, to the coaches, but it's struggled at times. And and I think Shay's really taken time to build a really strong foundation. And and you you all know that's what it takes. You got to get those kids gradually and to buy in, like you said, Tamika her system and she's done a great job. There's Ayanna, a, Moore, Ayanna Moore just hit that three, much needed three. Rakia Jackson moving around. That's Puckett missing the jumper and then doesn't get a rebound. But you know, there is a tie-in with Shea Ralph and Pat Summit. You know, Shea's mother, Marsha Lake, played with Pat. She was good. Yeah, very good player. She and may have been better than Shea. I, you know, I, <laughs> she was really good. But they're both competitive. So, well, she's the grand nanny now. She's, right. She gets to follow around the Shay's young daughter around the, the court. But I asked her, I said, well, what, are you, what is your name? You know, because grandmas always have a name. And she yeah. said, well, you know, I have my doctorate. So they call her Doc. Doc. They call Shay's her Doc. Shay's mom, yeah. Yes. Dr. Grandma. Yep. Yeah. Well. And this is a picture of Pat and that little Tyler Summit along with Marsha Lake, which is Shay Ralph's mother. And Shay will be the first to tell you that she doesn't think she'd be in the position she's in today without Pat Summit. Yeah, well, I Pat had a lot of respect for Shay and when she played at UConn, so uh just it's a competitor. Mutual. Absolutely. Yeah, Shay the competitor, but even the experiences that we've had with Pat and how she was with us as players. Yeah. And then as our as my coach, <laughs> as yes. your coach, as, as our coach. She actually coached me too. You yeah. were born there. <laughs> she, she did coach me. As testament to the fact your jersey's up in the rafters. But yeah, Holly, how big is this week for the Pat Summit Foundation? Yeah, it, Pat? It's, it's all about awareness and like anything else, you, you just bring awareness to it and then you hope people give money and that's what it's about you 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 got to raise money to uh, find a cure so that's what this is all about raising right. money and uh and the awareness bringing awareness and speaking of awareness in june they're gonna launch a new program called the game plan yeah and it, it, it's about the caretakers and and trying to educate them and uh and i think it's so important because caretakers are it's hard you know, it, it, it's hard to see someone struggle with Alzheimer's and you, you need that person to step up and, 
and take care of them. The game plan that you mentioned, Tamika, is actually going to be a, like a manual, a course for caregivers, Virtual. giving them uh, some time with each other in terms of a, a playbook, so to speak, as to how to be a better caregiver for a loved one that has Alzheimer's. And that was, of course, funded through the Pat Summit Foundation, Pat Summit. Dot org is uh, where you can go to get more information. Right now we're in the second quarter of this game. Winner of this game stays in second place in the SEC. So this is a, a massive game for both teams. And I think it's still early in the in the SEC conference play, right? I mean, obviously you want to stay in second, but every single night you go out, you're going up against quality competition. You never know who's going to win. I mean, yeah. we've seen win, we've seen teams win where we might have thought another team right. won when LSU lost to Auburn. I mean, every single night, you've got to come out ready to play. That was on Allen, and it's going to put Darby on the free throw line. you got to protect your home court. You all know that. It's so tough, and you've got to win in front of this big crowd. And uh, It's hard to win on the road. And as a test, as you said, Tamika, uh, LSU at uh, Auburn, and so it, it's just it's difficult. What did you think of Summit being on the back of everybody's jersey? I today? love it. I love it. I, uh, Purple's a good color on you, Holly. Huh? Like, <laughs> nice. Got your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. And your good luck for the Lady Vols because they're uh, up seven points right now, which is the largest lead of the game. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is going to be a great game. Both teams so competitive, a lot of great pieces. And Tamari Keith, great job keeping her hands up. As you know, she got her first foul in the first quarter. So definitely a player that Lady Vols want to keep on the floor. Jackson, she, she makes a difference. Jackson and Key on the floor at the same time right now. And a turnover on Tennessee. Rakia Jackson's come out so aggressive. I think a switch flipped Thursday night. I it think just so seemed too. to be playing so much freer. Yeah, I do too. And especially the, the second half. This is this is really for Tennessee fans. This is a great opportunity for Tennessee because they're usually down the first two quarters. Double digits. Double digits. All four of Tennessee's wins in conference play, they've come from double digits down. This Vanderbilt team's been the big pleasant surprise in the SEC this year. Shot clock under 10. Pierre nice. knocks it down. She's had back-to-back double-doubles and getting warmed up here today in Knoxville. Well, that's going to give her four points on the night, but I love just how smooth she's playing. She's only a freshman, y'all, so we got some years to watch her as she continues to grow. Still learning the system, still you know, learning how to play in this league at this level. Well, Powell, right place at the right time and makes the most of that rebound. Tell you this, Tamari Key got wrapped up just there with Camille Pierre, and I remember a time when she would fight that yeah, and exactly. end up getting the foul and sitting on the bench. So, you talk just growth areas to grow. Absolutely, more fouling Tamari Key. Holler say that she didn't mean it, but she threatened to send you home, didn't she? She did, <laughs> she did. My first practice, and when was this, Tamika? This was when I graduated, and uh, I actually graduated a semester early, so two of course you did. December, <laughs> December 2000, which I'm not that old. I really am not. And Tamika's jersey hangs in the rafters here along with Holly Warwick. So nice to see Holly today. Holly is also commentating some games with us on ESPN. And I have it in my contract with the exception of Steffi Sorensen. I only work with Lady Balls, by the way. So. <laughs> You, Nikki, Holly, and there's a look at those jerseys that and are retired. And you had Coach Fargus, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what I said, Nikki. Nikki Fargus, okay. We're first name basis now. Yeah, yeah. oh, I see, I see. Well, she's won a couple of championships in Las Aces. Vegas, yeah. yeah. Key posting up Washington, goes to her left. Offensive foul again, that's her second. Yeah, I, I don't... The hard part with Tamari Key mm -hmm. is because she's as big as she is, and as you said, it's her second foul. Because she's as big as she is, I feel like sometimes teams fall down when she makes a move. And not to say that Sasha Washington wasn't set, she was set in play. Key has to do a better job of making sure that she doesn't get those loose ball fouls. Key defending that time. Now she'll defend Washington. Shot clock under 10. Cambridge got loose 
and makes a nice move on the baseline for the bucket. I love watching Cambridge. Yeah. I like her energy. I like the way she plays. I like the way she leads her team. A competitor. Well, even Kelly Harper today was saying how much she's enjoyed watching Vanderbilt on tape. Just loves the way they play. Uh, Sasha Washington couldn't grab that. Cambridge trying to sneak it over to her. I think she stepped out of bounds. Yeah, Stripling foot was out of bounds. Let's go back to that Cambridge bucket. Yeah, Cambridge so good. Look at that. Marty not able to foul, but does a good job of getting around. Uh, Jordan Cambridge in her final season of competitive basketball. She's announced she will not seek a professional career, and it's been her best so far. It has. Look at these numbers right here. You just see and obviously last year she sat out with an injury really able to work on her game figure out different things she needed to do picked up a three-point shooting all of that and done a great job and Mukarat with the three-pointer a freshman from Poland her sister played at UConn while Shea Ralph was coaching there another sister played at Utah a member of the Poland national team so continue to dominate the race. oh Sasha Washington uh, Washington getting a piece of that shot. It goes out of bounds, and it'll stay with Tennessee. Sasha Washington, so active defensively. She's a player, even though you look at her, and she is a post player, but she's an undersized post, so able to do some switching, able to play inside, outside. Need to work on that three-point range to get it going, but I think everything that she does within the art, she does a great job. Puckett ends a scoring drought that was just over two and a half minutes long. Tennessee has maintained the lead, but Vanderbilt always within striking distance and a foul on Stripling as Washington goes to the line. And that'll be the first on Stripling. Yeah, pick and roll offense that Vanderbilt runs sometimes can be hard to guard, and I think. Tennessee is trying to find different ways. They've done a little bit of switching. They've stayed with their man. They've tried to get over the screen. So they're still trying to figure out how to defend that. Washington will be on the line for two free throws. What does she do so well as a smaller post player? I think it's energy. She's always moving. She, she's hard to stay. When you think about most post players that are going up against her are bigger. So she's quicker than them. She can pull them out. She can drive to the basket. She's done a good job over the years of adding more to her game and finishing at the basket. Remember the early on freshman, yeah. sophomore year, not able to get those bunnies in. But now she's been working on it. Really effective down low. Two-point game as we get ready to end the half. Winner stays in second place in the SEC. And a jump ball. Possession arrow is going to send it. The other way, back to Vanderbilt. Some frustration there by Sarah Puckett getting tied up by Oliver. I like the way Vanderbilt plays defense. They just literally everybody suffocate the middle. So as you see somebody driving in, you, you don't have the luxury of driving that far into the paint and passing it out. You have to have somewhere to go. Well, Shea Ralph says this team, she has the most weapons she's ever had in her short time at Vanderbilt. Washington, there's that speed. Take it straight to the basket, go up strong, and finish. We are tied at 31, heading into the final minute of the half. Tennessee's led by as many as seven. That was actually in this quarter. Tennessee trying to find ways to score. Zakia Jackson moving around. Shot clock at five. Powell at three. She'll pull the trigger. Didn't hit the rim. 47.3 seconds left in the quarter. It'll be Vanderbilt's ball. I like how Vandy has picked up the energy. They picked up the intensity. Here's the replay. Sasha Washington, nice little fake drive to the right. Goes up strong. Vanderbilt with the ball looking for their first lead since the first quarter. Moore into Washington. Puckett's on her. Jackson comes from the backside, knocks the ball away, and it's picked up by Powell. Tennessee can get the last shot if they choose. Jackson will drive. She'll pull the trigger, gets it. And now Vanderbilt can have the final shot. Well, they're going 
going to take their time and find that final shot. The crowd is up. Ayanna Moore probing. Reverse layup by Oliver to end the half. Wow. Well, quarter. Some of the numbers from the game so far. It'll be Tennessee's ball to begin the third quarter. Again, both these teams four and one in the SEC. The winner stays in second place. LSU also four and one. South Carolina undefeated. South Carolina, the only undefeated team in the nation right now. I wanted to thank for Tennessee. Normally they are down in the second, coming into the third quarter. And Tennessee has come from double digits down in all four of their wins. They have not been double digits down today. They've led most of this game. Passat, and just like she opened the game, knocks down a three-pointer to open the second half. And confidence. That ball seemed like it was in the air for a long time. Tamara Key trying to post up down low. And she's going to get called for a three-second call. Sasha Washington hit the hit the floor. I think everybody was looking over at the bench. Take another look at Passat. That shot, the ball went all the way up. Nice trajectory to come straight down into the basket. Vanderbilt with the lead for the first time since the 8:27 mark in the first quarter. Moore trying to add to it, doesn't. And Jules Spear with a rebound, uncontested. Spear. Powell lost it, but doesn't turn it over. He's got to get rid of it, though. Well, they're trying to find a way to get the ball to Tamari Key. And That'll what, work. Good look right there. Doesn't put the ball on the floor, goes straight up. If you're Vanderbilt, how do you even try to stop that? Well, I think you got to push her out of the paint. You can't let her get that low in a post-up. Good give and go. Cambridge dribbling in amongst Key in the post. Oliver Jackson collapses on her. Watch the movement. Vanderbilt offense. When the ball goes, that's something that Coach Ralph had talked about, that we got to keep moving and make, make teams defend us in so many different ways. Akia Jackson... Nice drive. Well, Rikia Jackson already in double figures today. She's the only Lady Vol player in double figures. 12.7 rebounds. She played a lot of energy today. And very aggressive trying to find her shot. In-state rivalry, you know what's up. Vanderbilt's only won here once in history. That was 2019. Moore saves it right back to Powell. Rifling the pass up to Puckett was Powell, and the layup is good. Those are the defensive possessions that Tennessee is looking to get. Tia Jackson almost with another steal. Yeah, Jackson was out of bounds in the process, but good hustle play by Jackson. Yeah, here you go. Another look at this. Moore trying to slave it in. Powell, great job stepping in. Good pass up. Vanderbilt. Puckett comes in with a net rating of 50 in the country. Tennessee has moved up to 56. Tennessee's been steadily climbing. Passat, second three of the half. Yeah, Passat is feeling it. Going up against her, no, going up against her former team and I think she's talking some trash to yes. somebody. Well, she was highly motivated in the introductions of some of the she got some booze, and so uh, she had a three right away, a big grin on her face. It's the fifth time in this game we've been tied. Puck. Puck it missing the three. And the, the way these two teams are positioned for the future, this, this is going to be a rivalry for a while. I'm excited oh, yeah. to watch these games for the next few years. Jackson rips the rebound away from Oliver. Entry to Key, and Key finishes. Yeah, that's a great high-low pass. The Key of Jackson seeing tomorrow. She giving her enough time to post up, and honestly, every single time Tamari Key is down low, Tennessee, the play, the team need to be looking to give her the ball. Key hasn't missed a shot yet today. Four of four. Passat going to work in the lane. Stops. Passat again. And Spear with another rebound. 
I like seeing Passat take those shots, though. You can tell she's in the flow. She is in the mix. And when you have a player like that, you got to keep feeding them the ball. And right here, take another look at this. Step back. Puckett not able to stay in front. And Passat, look at that reaction there. She's definitely talking to somebody. It's not <laughs> us, though. It's not us. Uh, the foul was on Cambridge, and Jill Spear at the free throw line now knocks down the free throw. She's having some fun. Got to love the, the intensity and the way this is being played. She's the first player ever to transfer to Vanderbilt from Tennessee. And has had a fantastic season in her debut year with the Commodores. Passat, McDonald's All-American from New Jersey. Part of the Sweet 16 team last year for Tennessee. And you got to look at this. Last year when she was playing for the Lady Ball, she really didn't get a chance yeah. to play. So getting a chance to get to Randy, getting her feet wet, getting into the system, this is, a, this is a style that really fits how she plays. Tennessee up four. Hollingshed misses the jumper, and it'll go back to Vanderbilt. Jillian Hollingshed, the junior who transferred in from Georgia originally. She's led the team in rebounding the last five games, really trying to find her spot in the rotation. Also a former McDonald's All-American. Hollingshed, Jackson, Puckett, Powell, and Spear on the floor for Tennessee. A different looking lineup right now. Yeah, look at this Vanderbilt offense. I mean, they just keep moving and moving and moving. Moore is going to take a shot. Whoa! So then. Ayanna Moore, she has produced so many highlights this year. I mean, that was well defended and absolutely buried it. Summit Foundation. Back Summit Alzheimer's Clinic here at Tennessee, big beneficiary of that foundation. And I'm with one of the all time great Lady Balls, Tamika Catchings, on this special day. Uh, it's been a blessing just to be able to come into the gym and so many people excited about We Back Pat, not just the players and the fans, but all around. Jillian Hollingshed not able to connect down low. Moore will push it, gets it out to Cambridge, open for three. Vanderbilt's made some timely threes in this game. They're down one. Vanderbilt is one of those teams, just like their head coach, they never quit. They are going to be in your face to the very end. Well, that's what you love. Holland said, trying to make a move down low. Jackson. And a rebound by Passat. It's, it's one of those years, Tamika, when you show up in the SEC, you don't know who's going to win. Well, uh, you don't, and I think that's what makes it so fun to watch. Great drive. Ayanna Moore continuing to attack the basket. So, like, in the last couple possessions, they already had five points. Building off of now 15 points for the game. He's been so good in SEC play. Pierre, a little too aggressive defensively, gets called for the foul. Gets called for that. Take another look. Going down the line, Ayanna Moore. Allen said not wanting to commit the foul, but Moore just really aggressive in the way that she's playing. Such a fun player to watch. Pierre just committed that foul. It's her third foul. Makura into the game. Number 24 defending Jackson. Tennessee offense looks a little stagnant. Everybody around the paint. He a Jackson trying to take it in. And Jackson knocks it down. Uh, with the going and the way that Vanderbilt plays, you gotta, you have to attack. They will keep you playing along outside of, around the three-point arc. Fans trying to become a factor now on this icy day in Knoxville. The drive to the bucket by Puckett. Sarah Puckett following behind Rakia Jackson. A nice little dish pass back all the way to the basket. Tennessee up three. Moore. Good defense by Powell. Jackson picks it up. Jackson straight through, uses the left, and the ball will stay with Tennessee. 
Tennessee did a great job at last possession, just collapsing. Ayanna Moore trying to find ways to score, continue to score for this Vanderbilt team. But with everybody collapsing, other players are open. You got to kind of read it. And the stripling just could not grab that inbounds play. She was open. Washington flips it out on the wing. I just love the passes by <laughs> Vanderbilt. Finding they, the open players. They play with so much freedom and creativity. Well, it's always what's the next best pass, what's the next best play, and Ayanna Moore wide open. Tennessee not finding the switches. They got lucky on that possession. And a foul on Oliver on the rebound. Jackson will be helped up. Well, Coach Ralph's going to take a chance. Wants Pierre back in the game. You just said it. She's picked up her third foul. It's got to be smart. And I'm sure that this team will try to do what they can to protect her from getting another foul. I mean, Camille Pierre's, Pierre's only been playing organized basketball five years. She's already been the Arizona High School Gatorade Player of the Year. It's just one of those people that they find their sport and they're immediately good at it. But she's still learning at this elite level. Jackson for three. Off the mark. Offensive rebound by Puckett. And a jump ball called. And it'll give it back to Vanderbilt. And that's just part of the game. Puckett does a good job of going up and getting the ball, but she brought it down. And when you bring it down, other people's hands are able to get on the ball. That's a good call. It is a good call. Camille Pierre got her hands on it. Three on the way. Good. Another three for Makura. Her Makura. second three. Sixth tie of the game. Makura off the bench again. She's from Poland. A couple of sisters that played at this level. One Anna played at UConn when Shea Ralph was coaching there. That's how the connection was made with the family. Uh, Makarat now two for two from the three points. So both of the three point shots that she's taken have come right on time. We were tied at the half. Tennessee's had a little bit of a lead here in the third quarter, but now we're tied again. Jackson trying to take Pierre. Spins. Misses the shot. Offensive rebound by Striplin. Shot clock reset. Under a minute to play in the quarter. Striplin trying to post up. Does scores. Strickland was working hard down low, really trying to take it at Camille Pierre. She knows what's at stake, and Pierre with three fouls. That's risky for Vanderbilt to have her out there. A two-point Tennessee lead in the closing seconds of the third quarter. Pierre taking Strickland, misses the shot, and Tennessee will get the ball back with 33.5 to play in the quarter. You know, but I like that move. I like that move by Pierre. Put your head down, take it to the basket. You know what you're capable of doing. We've seen her do that play over and over and over again, and the shot goes in, or she gets to the free throw line. Not able to convert on that last play, but definitely a good play for Vandy. Pierre right now is the SEC Freshman of the Week. Had a four-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock for Tennessee on this possession. Tennessee up to closing seconds of the third quarter. Powell pulls the trigger. Rebound goes out of bounds. It'll stay with Tennessee. Well, they're going to get one more look at the basket. Tennessee got lucky on that offensive rebound. And we're all looking at Kelly Harper asking uh, what they run here. Stripling got open the last time, but the pass was off the mark on this inbounds play. They lob it up to Jackson. Jackson muscles it up, draws the foul, and will go to the line with 6.9 seconds left in the quarter. Well, that'll be on Cambridge. That's going to be her second foul. And Coach Ralph is upset from the sideline just because of the angle and the way that it is. She didn't feel like the referee was, had a good look at that play. While that discussion goes on, Rakia Jackson calmly nails the free throw. Tia Jackson, almost an 80% free throw shooter this year. In fact, both these teams are two of the better free throw shooting teams in the country. And Jackson knocks them both down. Wynn will come in and replace Stripling. 
a win on Cambridge. Trying to put a little bit of pressure, but Ayanna Moore is going to come in and uh, I think. Avery Strickland in for the Lady Balls as well. That was number 13. She's in for the first time in the game. Transferred from Pitt, but from here in Knoxville. So Vanderbilt with 6.9 seconds left. Have the ball into the third quarter here. Moore racing down the floor. Launches it. Doesn't get the roll. Puckett got the rebound. And so we will head into the final quarter with the late. We'll try to come from behind the side. Not in the lineup to start the fourth quarter. I'm sure we'll see her, though. Win with the ball for Tennessee. And shot off the mark by Stripling. And a foul on the rebound. Called on Tess Darby. Uh, Tess Darby going in aggressively. Cambridge had her boxed out. And might, a little bit of a push. That rebound. Both teams understanding the importance of every single possession matters. Going out to the loose ball, those 50-50 balls become really extremely important, not only the whole game, but especially when you get to the fourth. Again, Cambridge shooting the three, knocks it down from the corner. And that trend continues to start the fourth. The Commodore's down by a point. They can't leave three-point shooter wide open. Cambridge shooting 34% from the three. Vanderbilt has only won one time here in Knoxville, and Darby buries the three from the opposite side of the floor. Darby, one of the best all time in three-point shooting here at Tennessee. She is eighth on the career three-point list. And that is an area that Coach talked about, Coach Harper talked about earlier today, is trying to get her going, figuring out a way to get her some easier look. Win spinning away from Moore. Nobody there to get the pass. Well, two players right there, but neither one of them looking for the ball. Shipman and Puckett trying to run a play. So Spear comes back into the game, replacing Win. 14th turnover of the game on the Lady Vols. Win, instant infusion of energy for Tennessee. You see Coach Ralph on the sideline trying to get her team motivated and excited to play. She Not that they need it. It's interesting the term she used today. She wants her team to have relentless consistency. Off the, rock, off the, off the mark. And it's going to stay on this end. Goes off of Tennessee. Great rebounding effort. Both teams. Vanderbilt had players flying in. Tennessee not able to hold on to it. Cambridge will inbound it. Lobs it out to half court. Makura. What do you think she meant by that? Relentless consistency. I think every single possession having that same intensity and in how you go at it. When you're relentless something, you won't be denied. Shot clock a factor here. Down to two. Makura leans in, got the rim. And a foul called against Vanderbilt. And I think they're going to get more on this. Yeah, Moore trying to go over the back. And uh, that'll be the second foul on Moore. Passat coming in off the Vanderbilt bench for Shea Ralph. Shea Ralph building a championship culture at Vanderbilt. Wants people in the program that have won championships at some level. And for her, it's all about preparing her team for March. She's already talking about the NCAA tournament. I love how she speaks that into her team. And Stripling can't catch that entry pass. Turnover to Vanderbilt. Yeah, that was a straight pass in. Stripling not able to get it. Shea, of course, one of the greats at UConn all time. You battled with her. Can you see some of the way she played and the way she coaches? Oh, I see it in her players. I mean, that intensity. When you talk about that relentless, the relentless pursuit in every single possession, that is the epitome of Shea Ralph and how she played every single possession that she was on the court. Even when you watched her and she was on the bench, you still saw that fire that she had, that she possessed. And that's what you love. I love having the opportunity to talk to her about her team and just the excitement that she carries. And talking about every single individual player and how she built with the pieces that she has. You said it earlier, she feels like she has more weapons this year than she's had in the past. But every year, you're starting to see that. Tamari Key into the game right now. Stripling goes to the bench with two fouls. Moore 
had a break in the defense and nailed it. All of a sudden, there was a clearing in the lane. <laughs> foul, forcing her way to the basket and draws the foul. Diana Moore going to get called for that third foul, but look at this on the offensive end. She goes in, and it's almost like Tennessee was trying to figure out which player was going to go and help, and Diana Moore said, okay, I'll go in. Thank you. And Moore has just committed her third foul to put Jasmine Powell on the free throw line. Powell knocks that down. Powell in grad school here at Tennessee, already has a degree in journalism and electronic media. This Tennessee team put up a 3-3-7 fall GPA last year, which, or last fall, I should say, which was the second highest ever. There were three perfect 4-0s and eight Lady Vols had a GPA over 3-5. That's awesome, thinking about school. They are not yet yeah. back in school, back yet in school. They were supposed to go tomorrow, but class has been canceled because of all the ice. Cambridge, three on the way, in and out. Powell with the rebound and will race up the floor. Yeah, I like that cut right there. Oh. Powell. Jasmine Powell, little showtime. Timeout Vanderbilt. And when you start looking at growing up with watching women basketball, talk about Marsha Lake, her experience with the game and having, and the players, she, she actually played with Billy Moore. Billy Moore was on that yeah. team. Uh, a lot of the other greats were on that team. So having that opportunity is a big deal. Pierre scoring right out of the timeout. And that cuts the lead to four. Tennessee had been on a seven to two run that lasted over three minutes. And that takes a little wind out of the sail here of this crowd. They've become quite a factor. Well, you knew Vandy was going to come back at some yeah. point and, and hit a couple of shots and try to figure it out, trying to find a way to get the ball to key, and shot will go. Well, wait a second. Let's see who the foul's called on the, by the reaction of the crowd. Looks like Joel Spear's going to get called. Yeah, foul's on Spear. Spear went up to get that rebound. Now, keep in mind, Pierre has got three fouls right now. Maybe with that right arm, she goes up to get the ball, but that right arm drags on Pierre, not allowing her to jump. Second foul on Spear. Let's see how both teams respond to that. Pierre trying to get past Puckett. Passat in the game now with the ball. They're trying to attack find the open players, and you said it earlier, you like the way that Bandy plays. They're constantly moving and finding the open players. Sasha Washington, great finish at the basket. Don't count Vanderbilt out, ever. Two-point lead for Tennessee. The winner stays in second place in the SEC. Tamari Key, posting up strong. Well, that's that pick and roll offense when Tennessee gets it in. Anytime Tamari Key gets her right around the basket where she doesn't have to dribble and go straight up, that's a great shot for Lady Balls. Tamari Key, five of five. Every time she's shot, she's scored. Cambridge misses the three. Darby with the rebound. Clears it to Spear. That's Powell. Powell driving in and draws the foul. That's a good drive by Powell. Take him to the basket, but look at the big going at it right here. Sasha Washington gets it down low, goes up strong against Keith. And then pick and roll offense. Tamari Key finds her spot underneath the basket, turns around five for five. Foul on Washington. She stays in the game. Makara in the game once again for Vanderbilt. Powell's been perfect at the free throw line today, four of four. She's got 12 points now, eight assists for Powell. Powell court vision, being able to look up, and that's what we're used to seeing, I'd say, between Powell and Cambridge, finding those open players. Look at this offense right here. Vanderbilt continues to move. Players move and move and move. I think sometimes they don't, they probably don't even know where they're moving, but as long as they're moving, it's part of the offense. Hard to guard. Six-point lead for Tennessee. Cambridge trying to get some space. Oh, my goodness. How did she do that? 
Tamari Key's reaction on that, but Camber's great job of turning the corner. Washington picks it off. Only Powell to beat. Hands it off. And the bank is open for more. Ayanna Moore right now, 19 points. And Vanderbilt back to within two. Crucial turnover at the wrong time. Kamara Key trying to post up. Uh, Another turnover. Cambridge with the steal. Got her hands on that pass and kept it. Watch out. Here come the Commodores. Oliver with the bucket. And the in this point of the game, four minutes left. That's the last media timeout. And for both of these teams coming in, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. For most teams, you practice the four-minute segment. Three on the way. Good by Joel Spear. And the lead is three as a result. Now Vanderbilt left her wide open, almost daring her to take the shot. Washington hands it to Oliver. Cambridge can't save it. And uh, Cambridge is trying to say a lady ball touched it, but not getting the call. Let's see. I'm meeting it half court. And they're going to talk uh, about it. Yeah, if it touched one of the lady balls, yeah. So they're going to give the ball back to Vanderbilt. Well, there's still six seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah. So Vanderbilt, knowing they have, they have to work fast to get a score. Good officiating. One official didn't see it. The other did. But you're right. Shot clock is six. They got to score in a hurry. Get the shot off at least. Cambridge, one on the shot clock. Boy, is she money or what? Oh, yeah. And Sasha Washington set that screen. Gives Cambridge just enough space to get that shot up. By the way, Rakia Jackson's been out of the game for quite a while. Not sure why. Key. And a foul on Tamari Key, offensive foul. That's her third. Uh, Tam Tamari Key trying to take her time down low, does a good job setting it up, setting it up. But yeah, you see that left elbow come across. So Vanderbilt looking to retake the lead here in Knoxville. Vanderbilt has won one time in history in this building. That was in 2019. Passat getting around the screen, fire short. Cambridge picks it up. And a whistle on the rebound. A lot of bodies going all over. So trying to watch the play. Uh, fouls on Passat, and that is her second. There's no shortage of intensity right now. Well, I love it. I mean, this is what you play for. Both teams competing, obviously, Passat. Haven't played at Tennessee, wants to win this game. Her teammates want to win it for the in-state rivalry. Tennessee trying to protect home court. So many things on the table. Both teams trying to stay at that number two spot in the SEC. A lot of things that play today. Spear had it blocked. Bodies on the floor, jump ball. Possession arrow gives it back to Vanderbilt. And that's uh, Amari Key, good sportsmanship, helping up. Jordan Cambridge. A good heads up play by Key to go get that ball. Spirit gets blocked. Tamari Key today, five for five, four rebounds. But she's playing with three fouls right now. And again, uh, Rakia Jackson not on the Tennessee bench at the moment. Moore. Washington clearing out, going up against Key. Tries to go under and travels. Now Sasha Washington trying to get Tamari Key in the air to go up to get that fourth foul. You understand the importance of a key out there with three fouls. And there she is trying to get it. End up traveling a little bit. See that foot move. Two minutes to play. Tennessee up one. Jasmine Powell. 
when she takes the ball in with that aggressiveness, she is hard to guard. Ayanna Moore trying to stay in front of her. And Powell missed the last one, the last opportunity for the and one. You saw her get upset with herself, but this one was determined to get to the free throw line. Double trouble for Vanderbilt. That was Moore's fourth foul and also puts Tennessee in the bonus the rest of the way. Fans trying to become a six man. Back door to Cambridge. She forces the pass, intercepted. Ninety seconds in regulation. Tennessee up four. Tennessee trying to figure out a way to take care of the ball. Spear probing, pulls it back out. Cambridge is on her close. Behind the back. And a foul on Cambridge. We'll send Jules Spear to the free throw line. Yeah, that was a little bit too aggressive for Cambridge. Great job, Spear going at the basket. They know that they're in the bonus and get to the free throw line. Cambridge is such a great defender. When she stayed down and stayed true to her defensive stance with her hand down, it's hard to go up against her. That time she swatted down, swatted at the balls. Anytime you swat down, that's going to be a foul. Cambridge third on Vanderbilt's all-time steals list. Jules Spear trying to pad the lead, does. It's a five-point Lady Vol lead. Spear perfect from the free throw line today. Three of three, this will be her fourth. where the good free throw shooting really comes in handy. It's a six point lead for Tennessee. And Vanderbilt trying to get a quick score. They've done a great job of running their offense. There's Sasha Washington with the great screen. Cambridge, the runner off the mark. Washington's offensive rebound and shot is off. Powell pushes it. Double team. And a timeout taken by Tennessee before a turnover. It'll be Tennessee's basketball. Jules Spear standing in front of the Lady Vols bench ready to throw it in. Tried to get it into Puckett and she's fouled from behind by Pierre. And that'll be the fourth foul on Pierre. And it'll put the Lady Vols on the line for two. Yeah, that's a tough spot to be on. Be in. You're playing behind on the post. Yeah, you're trying to get that steal. You got to steal or foul immediately. Try to take some time off the clock and give yourself opportunities to score. That is only the fifth free throw all season Sarah Puckett has missed. Knocks down the second one. And this matches the largest lead of the game. They got their three shooters out there from Sasha Washington down low. Set a screen. You don't have much time to run a full-fledged offense. You got to get a good look and get one fast. Cambridge dribbled out of bounds. Tennessee will get the ball back. Unforced error by Jordan Cambridge. Turns around trying to find a baseline floater for that three-point and ends up dribbling out of bounds. Vanderbilt will defend full court right now. Powell will throw it in for the Lady Vols. And a timeout taken by the Tennessee bench before that play can get started. Instead of taking that timeout, as now Tennessee doesn't have to go the length of the floor. They will inbound it in their half court. Powell takes the pass. And everyone swarming Joel Spear. And let's see if they get the foul on. If it's on Pierre, that's it for Camille Pierre. Pierre, the SEC freshman of the week, fouling out of this game with six points, four rebounds, and an assist. And a bright season ahead for Camille Pierre. Yeah, she's a fun player to watch. Watch the last couple games. Last three games, she's averaged double digits. And I tell you what, she is going to be one of the stars in the SEC. Jewel Spear on the free throw line continues to add to this Tennessee lead. 
Spear now five of five from the free throw line. Tennessee is a team. 17 of 18 from the free throw line today. That has been a big difference. Trying to find a quick score. Cambridge launches short. Picked up by Makara. Spear will push it. Under 30 seconds to play. You gotta find the open players. Vanderbilt is good at being able to get you in those corner jump ball. And they weren't fouling. That's a jump ball. And the ball will stay on this end with the possession arrow. But you gotta admire the discipline of Vanderbilt there. They they weren't gonna foul. I love that they created that jump ball. But it is looking like Tennessee is gonna be able to hang on here and stay in second place in the SEC. Beating off quite a challenge from Vanderbilt. And that'll do it. The fans rise to their feet. Tennessee wins at home against Vanderbilt. There's actually eight tenths of a second on the clock as that ball just squirted out of bounds. But it is Tennessee. Uh, th this was a gut check win for Lady Ball. Definitely a gut check win against a very good Vanderbilt Commodore team.